So I'm going to talk about move and copy. Um, now, move and copy, you can't separate. They are technically two commands that are one command, if that makes sense at all. Uh, basically, they are completely linked, the pair of them. So what can you move? You can move bodies. So if you have a look in my browser here, um, in the main assembly, I've got a body. So I've just got body one, that's that one. But you can also move bodies inside components. And in fact, you can move multiple bodies in components. But what you cannot do is move multiple bodies in multiple components. If that makes sense. So if I try and highlight that body, it will not highlight it. OK, so you can only move bodies if they are in the same component. You can't move multiple bodies from multiple components. OK, told you to start getting confusing. That's from the beginning. You can, in fact, move faces. So you can just select a face and you can move a face. You can move multiple faces so you can select that face and that face. And I could actually move those two faces together and you can move sketch parts. So sketch parts would include lines or the dots on the ends or anything. You can you can move any part of a sketch. So how do you move things? Or should I say, how do you move and copy things? Because they're, they're, they're connected. Well, the first thing you can do is you can just drag things. So you don't need to go into the sketch. You don't need to, so same as Russ said with the dimensions, you can actually drag part of a sketch and you can just drag it round. And you can pretty much do that with anything, really. Um, also, you can drag and reshape parts of a sketch, depending upon what um, constraints you have. So say for a circle, I can make a circle bigger or smaller, and I can also move a circle around. I can move components without actually doing anything else. So if you just grab a component, so this body here is actually this component, I can grab that. And I can just move that around the screen just by literally picking it and grabbing it. Now, you may not be able to do that for two reasons. One, you'll need to hit the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac. Or if you go here to the Select, you will see I have Component Drag. And it also says there that if you hold the Alt key, that will also do exactly the same. But the most popular way of moving things is to use the move command. And you're going to see the move command up here. It says move and copy. You will also see it on the drop down box. So we've got move and copy. And also my lovely, lovely favorite, which is right click. You'll see it there, the move and copy. And also the shortcut M will bring up the move and copy. Might not be able to see it because the zoom window's in the way. But anyway, don't worry about that. That's a separate thing. So let's start with bodies. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do lots of commands these because I I end up getting into a bit of a bit of a ding dong with everything all moved around. So we can move bodies. So let's press the M. And the first thing you'll notice, it will ask you, what do you want to select? So move what object? So if you remember, we had components, bodies, faces, and sketch objects. Now, an interesting thing to note, if you highlight a component and then you click M, it will move object component. And likewise, if you had a body selected, it would automatically select the body. But if not, if you just press M, it automatically comes up as bodies because that's the most common thing that you move is a body. First thing it asks you for there is a selection. So let's select body one there. The next bit that you see down is the five different move options that you have. Now, the first one is called free move. Um, now, a lot of people say, don't use free move. Don't ever use free move. Pretend it's never there. And I completely and utterly disagree with that because I think it's quite a clever little thing with certain provisos. So when you do free move, fundamentally what you're looking at is this little dot down here. And if you grab that little dot, you can move it around wherever you want. So just like dragging a component, you can move that wherever you want. But let's move that out of the way. One of the problems you've got is it moves it not only in the X and the Y 
axis, it also moves it in the Z axis. And that's very rarely what you want to happen. So if we select the body, we do have, oops, wrong one, sorry. We select body. What you'll also notice here is some little plane faces. Now what these plane faces do still allows you to free move, but it restricts one of the axes. So if we select that one and then we move it around, if you notice everything is changing, the Y distance and the Z distance, but not the X. And likewise, if I click that one and move that one around, that will do it in the X and Y plane, but not in the Z. And obviously the other one does the same, but it's just with the Y. But there is a little gotcha on this. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. The other option that you have, we select that body. We have these arrows. Now these arrows will restrict your movement to whichever arrow or whichever way the arrow is pointing. So if you go oops, that way, um, that will move it in the Y direction by 80 mil. If I did this arrow, it would move in the X direction, 80 mil. And if I use that arrow, obviously it's gonna go in the Z direction. But this is the big gotcha on this free move. Um, every time you select another option or another plane, it automatically resets all the other distances. So technically you've no idea where you are in free space. And the other thing that I think Autodesk should have put in, there's no reset to home. So you don't really know exactly where you are in the, in, in the free space. So I think that's why people often say don't use it. But I think on certain occasions, it is an extremely good move option. The other option that you have here is obviously the rotation. So you can literally rotate your body using the manipulators here. And you will see it will put the degrees of angle in the bottom here. So it does kind of give you everything you need. The only thing it doesn't do, like I said, is keep a track of where you are in the real world. <clears throat> so why do I like free move? <clears throat> well, the majority of times I like it because all I ever use it for, because it's the first one that comes up when you select it, is the last option we have here is create copy. Now, as soon as I click that, eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that under the bodies now we have body four. So as soon as I tick that create copy, I've created a copy of body one, and this is a unique copy. Okay. And then I can just move that using the arrow and I move that across to there. I click OK. And that is for me, a simple way of copying a body. <clears throat> there was one little bit that we missed out. So if I select that body, if you notice, when I clicked that body, as opposed to going up there and selecting it, I selected a part of the box. Let's just do that again. So if I select part of the box, now before I click that box, you'll notice that I get different pivot positions. And that's indicated by the dot and the arrows and the planes. So I quite often position it on the middle of the box, because obviously then if you want to rotate the box, it rotates, but stays in the same position. Now, if you've done something and then you think, ah, oh, I didn't really want to pivot it on there. I wanted to pivot it on something else. You have another little box under here, which says set pivot. And it's also there as well, set pivot. If you set pivot, that little box goes to green. And if I had a pound for every time I'd forgot to go back and press the tick, I would be currently in the Seychelles on my yacht. Once you've selected select pivot, you can reselect a part of the box to be a pivot. But the good news is it doesn't have to be part of that box. It could be part of another box. It could even be part of a sketch. OK, now it looks like it will only snap to points, but that's not actually true, because when you first put on a line, it does it on a line as well. And it will also find the midpoints of lines. Okay, so oops, sorry. 
So that there is snapping to the midpoint of that line. So if I did snap that as the pivot, remembering to click the green <laughs> tick, which I nearly forgot then, by the way, um, when you do rotate now, that will rotate the body around that sketch. Okay. <clears throat> now, the set pivot also does one very other interesting thing. If I go to set pivot again, if I selected this line, one thing you'll notice, especially if you go to a top view, the direction arrows follow that line's X and Y axis. Now, it's, it's not following the designs X and Y because they're, they're going across that way. So if I selected that and just say yes and then redo it, I can select that line and that will then pivot it on that angle. Or I could even do it on a pentagon and click it there. So what happens now is, ooh, no, remember to click the green box. When you move the arrows now, it will stay in parallel with that line. Okay. So I'm just going to go back and get myself where I know where I'm supposed to be. Otherwise I end up with too many bits and I don't know where I am. Now, often you just want to copy something. So if you just select body one, I'm on a Mac, so I do command C. If I then do command V, that will do virtually everything and bring up the move command as well. Now, the create copy option has been grayed out because for obvious reasons, you've already just made a copy of it. And there it is again in body four. So you can then just drag that out and that's your copy. Now, another thing about copy that often catches me out, I do move and I select a body. I start to move it and then I go and I go, no, 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 no. I want to make a copy. But as soon as you've started moving that, the create copy gets grayed out. OK, so if you need to copy an object. You need to click the create copy first before you start moving it. Otherwise, you'll lose that option to create copy. Yeah. So following on on the move bodies, if we go to that one, we have other options for moving. Now, the first one that comes up is translate. Now, translate is quite interesting, especially if I select a different body. So if I move this body here, and I go to the second option, which is translate. What this does now is this asks me for a direction, which is this box here. Now, this one currently is a component X, Y, Z. So what does that mean? Well, when we look at, let's come out of there. This body here uses the design origin. Whereas this body here uses this components origin. And when we have a look at that from the top, we're going to notice that this body has an X and Y axis here, like X and Y, whereas this component or this body of this component has this axis here. So if I click move and I move this body and I use translate, currently it's using component X, Y, Z. But I do have an option to use the design X, Y, Z, which will actually change it to the overall design origin, which is this one. Now, translate is really, really good because what I can do is I can put in the X distance 40 and I can put in the Y distance 40. And they've stayed there. OK, so I could then change that back to zero. I could change that one back to zero and I always know where I am in the free space. So this is a lot better than just the move command. And you also have the option there to create a copy. The other thing with that, if we move and we tran oops, translate, we had component X, Y, Z and we had design X, Y, Z and we also have pick direction. Now, pick direction actually allows me then, as before, I can pick an edge and it will now 
move based on that translation. Go back to that one, and I'll just get rid of these origins just to get rid of that. Just get rid of these origins so they're not in the way. If we select that move, we also, the next option then we have is rotate. So you've still got the free move, but the thing that it asks you for is an axis. Now that axis can be that part of a body, of its own body, that part of its own body. So for example, if we pick that as the axis, that will rotate it around that option. And it will give you in the box there what degree you're at, so that's 90 degrees. But you can select other axes. So let's just say we selected that axis there, and then we rotated it. That will rotate that box again around that other body. We move that body, then we go point to point. Point to point is a really good option. I use this a huge amount. This is probably one of my favorites. What it asks you to do is select an origin point, first of all. So the origin point can be any point, but there's also middle points as well. So when you put these up, it's hard to show you because it's doesn't matter how much I zoom, these boxes stay the same size. But you do have a point in the middle of there or the top or the bottom. So if we select that as the origin point, I can then select a target point. So my target point could be there. And what you'll notice is a little blue line that tells you where it's gonna zoom across to. So if I click that one as the target point, it will move to that point. But with a target point, you can also select points on a sketch. So we can move him over to there we can move him to the end of there or there it really doesn't matter where you move it it just needs to be a point or the center of a line okay so you can move it to there the final one we have on the move we select that one no i'll select that one again we select that body the final one we have is point to position. So if we select the point, so let's select that point there, we get that same option again, which is the coordinate space of either the component or the design. Now, this won't give me the arrows this time, but if you notice the dimensions of position X and Y, if we go design or component, they are completely different because that's based on where the axis is. So if we look at that component's origin is there and the overall design origin is here. So if I look from the top, move that around that way to make it a bit clearer. Your move based on the coordinate space of the component is from there to there. But if we go from the design that is from there to there. Now, the good thing about this one is we can now position that point back to zero. So if I just make that one zero and then make that one zero, that will swiss it to the center origin. One of the great things they did about this one, point to position, is they gave you an option to reset the position. So if you don't like that, you can go back and click reset position and that will put it exactly back into your 3D world, at exactly the same position before you started moving it. <clears throat> I'll just uh, command Z and come out of everything. So I'm back to where I started. The other options you've got, that was bodies. We have components. Now they're pretty much the same apart from one thing, and I'm going to explain that later. But you still get all the same options, the translate, the rotate, and I'm not going to go through it again because that would be pointless. You have sketch objects. Now sketch objects pretty much the same. You've still got the same free move, so you can just select that there 
And if you want, you can then just drag that around in free space. But remembering that's going in the Z axis as well, um, which is great as long as you're 3D sketching. But if you're not, that can cause you a heap of problems later on. You do also have them faces. Now, faces is an interesting one. I personally don't use it that much. Um, I don't know whether Russ does. It'd be an interesting thing to find out. Um, you can just select faces and you can pretty much do some moving around. Now, when I say you can pretty much do some moving around, if that's face there, if I try to use that arrow, nothing's going to happen because it can't technically because it's it, it the face can only go up or down. But I can drag that face up and I can drag that face down. You can also rotate that face. So again, it will ask me for an axis so I can select that axis. And if I want, then I can rotate that face to make a little bit of a wedge. And then once you start selecting other axis and you start doing things over here and you start rotating, that's when things just all basically go beat tong. So just don't do it. Now, going back to what I said before, let's just go back and go back to how I was. Um, you can just use the command C and the command V. So if we select this body here, so that's body one, if we just do command C, command V, and then move that across, that is what we call a unique body. Any body that you copy um, will always be unique. So if I extrude this one here and I come up, only that box extrudes. The copy is unique, so it doesn't follow suit. However, if you select a component and you, in fact, let's do this one. If you do a component and you do Command C and Command V, and then you move that one, let's say, to here. Shouldn't have really done that, should I? Because that's gone in the Z direction. So let's put that one back to zero. And then let's just do the Y30. So what you'll notice now on this one is it's done something a little bit weird. Before we had component one, version one, or copy one, we had component two, copy one, but we now have component two, copy two. What does that mean? Well, fundamentally, it still copied both the bodies. But when I switch that body off of component 2.2, it switches the body off on component 2.1. And if I switch it on on component 2.1, it switches it on on component 2.2. So the only way I can describe this is Dolly the sheep. You've made an absolute clone of that component. So if I extrude there and then I come up, they both copy each other. They are directly linked. Whatever you do to one will be a direct copy of the other. Now, sometimes you might not want that to happen. So you might say, well, I, I've i spent a lot of time building this and I'd just like to make another copy of it and do something different, but I don't want them linked. And there is a way of doing that. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back to where I was at the beginning. So if I right click component 1.1, I have an option here to copy. Now, if I right click component 1.1 and do paste, I end up in the same mess that I was before. So I ended up with component 1 version 1. And I've now got component one, version two, or copy two. So again, whatever I do to one will be mirrored on the other one. So there must be a better way of doing that than there is. Because luckily Autodesk worked this out. Just go back to there. If I copy component 1.1, so I do a copy, instead of right-clicking the same component, if I either right click another component or right click 
the main assembly or just right click anywhere not on component 1.1 i get a new option and that new option is called paste new now what paste new will do i think i've hit the wrong thing there let me just bear with me one second so if i component 1.1 if i right click copy and if i click anywhere not on component 1.1 and I click paste new, it will paste a brand new copy, which I can move out the way. And if you notice in the browser, just click OK, we have component 3.1. So we have created a completely unique component or a couple of bodies or whatever way you want to look at it. Now, if I extrude, ah, now this is an interesting one. Once you've done that, something weird has happened and what it's done is fusion has said okay i'll let you do that but i need you to record in the timeline where everything is at the moment and that's to allow the, the parametric uh, aspects of fusion so you have two options you can either revert the position but that's not really going to help me on this situation because if i do that it's going to be stuck on the other box so i have an option here to capture position now when i capture the position it creates a little flag or a little uh, icon in there and it says that the position of those components has been recorded for the parametric aspects OK, so what I can do now is I can extrude the original part here. And if I bring that up, you'll notice it's unique. It isn't being copied by those two. Now, another thing has also come up, which is an actual quite interesting thing. And this happened to me, obviously, when I uh, practiced this. I got a warning come up and I'm definitely don't like warnings. I, I, it's, it's just how I am. I, I hate warnings. So when you click that warning, and I'm not going to go into this in, in great detail. If I review the warning, it says that the reference failures, the model is using cache geometry. Now, warnings you can live with, um, but errors you can't. And yellows you can live with, but you really want to avoid them. Now I've researched this particular failure and there ain't no cure. And the reason being is that technically the move and the copy option has its place, but it is not the ideal solution. There are much better options for moving things around. And that includes a line and joints. And we will be covering those later. And had I used a line and joints, we wouldn't have that error, but I'm definitely not going into that just now. So hopefully that's everything covered. Sorry, it was quite a complex topic, um, but thank you very much.